So what you have up there right now for the product is an attack of a new profile by the water. That's down here. Yeah, that's right. This would be a category one attack where the water attacks once. We briefly talked about that and talked about how it gives us geminal diols. This is a reversible reaction, however, and the equilibrium lies far on the ketone side. Um, so even though there might be some of this in um, some of this product, it's not going to be our major product. So your instructor didn't bother drawing this. Also, maybe we might think that we're out of water if there's only one equivalent. So for both of those reasons, your instructor drew the ketone form and not the geminal diol form. This is, uh, the equilibrium would certainly favor the ketone here, even if some of the waters did attack. Now, you had an, another interesting idea, which is that you could use this alcohol to attack. That would give us this. Oh, for, uh, that's certainly possible. To review, there's a special name for this type of functional group. What do we call this functional group that we formed here? Hemiketal. Terrific. Very good. Hemiketal. Hemi, because it's half hydroxy and half OR, and ketal, because it comes from a ketone. Uh, well, that's, uh, that would be uh, certainly a possible um, reaction here. And if there was even more alcohols, maybe some of them would attack a second time and give us a full ketal. However, all of those are equilibrium reactions sure. too. And again, the equilibrium lies far on the ketone side. Um, so uh, in this case, uh, again, the, uh, they didn't bother showing that reaction over here. They stuck with this. Uh, that's a little bit tricky or, or pesky, though, because that, that was certainly reasonable. Um, hopefully, since you're doing a multiple choice test, hopefully they wouldn't give you both of these as the sure. answer. Hopefully, they would only give you one uh, in this case, because that is a little tricky to figure out. But we should keep in mind that even though alcohols and waters can attack ketones, um, usually the equilibrium favors the ketone or the aldehyde. So in a case like this, um, we're going to be focusing on how the water attacks the ester over here and um, not focusing on how it attacks the ketone. That started to get a little tricky. So as it turned out, this was the answer that your instructor gave. Again, it looks like you can expect to see on the test multiple functional groups. And suddenly, why don't we try naming this? <laughs> You'll have to use a, a little bit what we talked about. Uh, actually, you're going to mainly have to use stuff from the, uh, the other video series on nomenclature. So, so with the uh I would know how to I would know how to name it without the uh, carbonyl group. Mm -hmm. It'd be uh, hexanoic acid. Absolutely. How do we uh, how do we uh, treat the ketone? Yeah, that's the question. Well, first of all, how did you know that this gets the suffix and not the ketone? Because it's it's uh, more oxidized. Yeah, this has three bonds to oxygen, and this only has two. Now, if this was the principal functional group, the suffix would be O-N-E. But since this is the principal group, the suffix is oic acid. Now, we talked about this a little bit earlier. Since this is not the principal functional group, it has to be named as a prefix. Do you remember from that other video series, what's the prefix that we use for aldehydes and ketones? What's the prefix for aldehydes and ketones? I remember that. It starts with the, the O, right? It's, yeah. I, I can't read off. So it's oxo. Oxo, correct. The prefix for aldehydes and ketones is oxo. oxo. And that's, yeah, that's for both. For both aldehydes and ketones. They have different suffixes, uh, but they both have the same prefix, which do is oxo. Do we have to indicate numerically where it's located? Yep, that's good that you thought about that. So where, where would it be? Located? Five. Right. We have to start the numbering over here to give this terminal group the lowest possible number. So it would be 5-oxo-hexanoic acid. Right. That's, not, that's a pretty typical problem. Okay, so let's see. Um, so what we've seen here is that adding water, we can add water to any of these to make carboxylic acids. 